if it's an ongoing symptom, whether it's the anxiety of the local church trying to rebuild itself after the destruction of the pandemic. Maybe it's the divisions in the National Church of England about the direction God is calling us to and how far LGBT people are welcomed and blessed. I'm not sure whether it's my own response to the uncertain and troubling state of the world. We serve by what's happening in the Holy Land in Ukraine. We're wondering what we're doing enough to meet the challenges of climate change. Maybe I'm just getting on with But despite the quiet of the bridge, set back on the noise of the Holland Road, and the man that I have to cherish my calling and love my life, I have found sleep difficult. I used to take the granted sleeping straight through seven or eight hours. Now you know, I might still get that out of Sleep is not broken. As I wake up in the middle of the night, restless with problems to fix, or puzzles to solve. I know I'm not alone in this. Books have been written about how to sleep well. Last winter, Dr. Michael Mosley's podcast, Sleep Well, was in the top 10 of most listened to podcasts on the BBC. It can be frustrating sometimes, giving yourself time to rest, but then being unable to experience it. We're out in a mess. Often, if I'm awake at this time, it will be because I'm struggling to sleep and I'll be irritable. Tonight, I am awake to keep the tradition, the wake, to experience the beauty and the joy of Midnight Mass. The Prince blessed, nurse and thanks. For God's great yes to the world he loves in the incarnation and birth of Jesus of Nazareth. And sing carols of what we need most, carols of joy and peace and love. Except reserves 24%. St. Augustine, one of the great theologians of the fourth and fifth centuries, had grown up in North Africa with a Christian mother named Monica. But for many years he was on a spiritual quest before embracing her faith as his own. Reflecting back on his life and his confessions, he prayed, Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Many of us experience times of restlessness in life. It might come from stress or disappointment or fear. Restlessness can come from seeing the world or our lives as a problem that needs to be fixed, or a puzzle that needs to be solved, as if just one thing would fix it so it works as it should. And a few turns in the Rubik's Cube would click everything into place. There is a way that the satisfaction with the world as it is, is the proper and good response. We long for things to be better in our lives, in our community, in the world. The season of Adam that we've just been through was much more than a countdown to Christmas. But it was a season that gives voice to our longing for God to bring in a better world. In the week before Christmas, this longing is expressed through prayers for the Avantiphons. Prayers for each day that reflect on different names given to Jesus by the church. So we cry out, O Wisdom, O Adonai, O Root of Jesse, O King of David. 
David, oh morning star, O oh, king of the nations and their desire, O oh, Emmanuel. The good news that we celebrate on this most holy night is that the puzzle is not ours to solve and the problem is not ours to fix. The broken world is not ours to mend or heal alone. But the good news is that the child in the manger, who is our wisdom and mood, the root from which we grow, and the key to our future, the light to guide us and inspire us, to comfort us and show us our way, is our light of hope and God with us. Joel's account of the birth of Jesus, the birth of Jesus is read for us, strips back the Christmas story and draws us to the heart of the matter. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not overcome. Throughout the centre of the Christmas story is not the wise and the gifts. The centre of the story is the cosy to stay the sea with cows and donkey and shepherds and sheep. The centre of the story is the crowd of sparkling angels. It isn't even Mary and Joseph. The centre is the child of the poor. The centre of the story is Jesus. That life in which God and humanity and heaven and earth. And that promise we heard tonight. That to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but We live in times when many of us feel troubled or restless. St. Augustine prayed all those centuries ago, our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Good news we celebrate tonight is that we do not need to go on a quest to prove ourselves or impress God to grasp Him and find that promised rest. He comes to us. He meets us where we are. Some people might have seen in the news on social media the crib scene from the Lutheran Church in Bethlehem this year. It shows the figure of Christ, the figure that I brought out on a golden cushion in the midst of the world. The hope at the heart of the Christmas story is that God reaches out to us, that God makes his home in us and in the world as it is. Christmas speaks of God's deep commitment to the world he loves. How are you sleeping? In heavenly peace, I pray that this Christmas you will be able to find rest and peace and hope for the future through the love we find in the Christmas story, in Christ, in the wondrous story of his birth. For I believe that it is here that we see God's answer to our longing. God's response to our cry. O Wisdom, O Adonai, O Root of Jesse, O Key of David, O Morning Star, O King of the nations and their desire, O Emmanuel.
in the making thousands of years ago is the key to our future. <coughs> o key of David, the sceptre of the house of Israel, you open and no one can shut. You shut and no one can open. Come and leave the Christmas in the prison house. Those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. Amen.